My name is William Justice. I make videos about filmmaking, editing with DaVinci Resolve, and creating animations with Fusion. Today, we're going to create this animated, flexible bullet list using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. In my latest video, which should be coming out soon, I was setting up a bullet list to go through each of the tips in the video as I was talking about them. I started setting up the bullet list and trying to get that video finished, but I decided to put the brakes on that and create a video about the bullet list itself because it was actually interesting to set it up. My goal was to create a bullet list that was flexible, customizable, animated, easy to set up, and that could be reused for any project that I was doing. I've created a link in the description for the Fusion settings if you'd like to try the bullet list out for yourself. If you like my videos, please subscribe, comment below. I'd really love to hear from you. Okay, let's create this customizable, flexible, reusable bullet list. All right, let's, first step is to get into Fusion. So we're gonna right click in the media pool area, say new Fusion component, and we'll set it for, uh, I don't know, uh, 35 seconds. Hit create. Drag that down into the timeline and click Fusion at the bottom to get into Fusion. All right, the first step is to create the bullet. So we're going to create a small circle with a number on it and some text. So we'll use a background node. And with the background node selected, we're going to hit the, the circle to get the mask. We'll hit two on the background node so we can kind of see what we're looking at. We're going to make the circle a lot smaller, just about like that. And then we're going to put a number inside of it and some text out to the right. So with the background selected, we're going to hit the text option in the toolbar. So we have a, so we have a merge with some text. And we're going to go ahead and hit the text one more time. So we have another merge and the second text. So the first text is going to be the number on the bullet. And the second one is going to be the text that goes with the bullet item. I'm going to right click on Arrange Tools and say Two Connected. Um, that helps things line up a lot better. Okay, let's go ahead and add our text. So with the first text node selected, we're gonna put a number one for the first bullet item. We'll select the merge two and hit two on that so we can kind of see what it looks like. So it looks like the number needs to be a little bit smaller. So we'll take the, click on text and we'll drag the size down just a bit to make the number fit in there. Okay, now let's add the, the text for the bullet. So we'll click on text two and start typing in, let's see bullet text. Okay, you notice that it overlays, um, you notice that it's right on top of the graphic and we want it to align to the left hand side. So we're going to go to the horizontal anchor and click this little icon right here. And that's going to set the, the text to align to the left side of where the X is or where the X position is. Now we just need to move the bullet text over and let's make it just a touch smaller. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to just do a real quick animation on our bullet. Let's go to the first frame. And for the ellipse, we're going to animate this. We'll hit a keyframe on the level and a keyframe on the width and height. Go over about six frames. And we're going to keyframe the level and the height and width. Go back to the first frame. And we're going to bring the level all the way down and the height and width all the way down. So that has the the circle is going to expand and come in. Now at the same time while the circle is expanding, I want the number to do the opposite. So I'm going to have the number start big and then go into that position. Okay, so we're going to do this using the merge. So we'll select on the merge and we'll be on the very first frame and we're going to keyframe the size and then we're going to also keyframe the blend and that's going to allow us to adjust the opacity. We'll go to frame number six hit a keyframe on the size and the blend. So that's going to set that's going to be where we're going to. So back to the first frame and we're going to bump up the size of our number pretty big like that. And then we're going to set the blend to 0. So now we have a little animation looks like that. Next step is we're going to animate the text using the right on. So right when the bullet finishes getting there with the circle and number Let's hit this text number two, and we're going to set a uh, keyframe on the right on, and we're going to pull that all the way back, and we'll go over like five frames and have it right on. So this is the basic bullet. It's going to look like that. The last thing we're going to do with the bullet is we're going to go into the spline editor, select all of the fields. Let's highlight all the points and we'll hit this to smooth them. It's just going to smooth out all the animations just a touch. Like that. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple little things to the end of this merge so that we can do some animations later on. We're going to add two transform nodes and then we're going to add a time speed node. And that's basically everything we need for each of the bullets right here. Okay, so how do we how do we create more bullets? We could highlight all of the nodes here, copy them and paste them to create a second bullet and merge it in with the first bullet, select the merge, put it in the viewer by hitting two, and adjust the Y position. And there we go, we have, we have two bullets. But the problem with this is that, um, obviously we can change our bullet text right there, that's the first one, and we can change, that's, this, that's the first one and that's the second one, so we can change the bullet text, but if we wanna adjust any of the styling, so for example, maybe we wanted to change the bullet color, it only affects the first one. Or if we wanted to change the font, it only affects the first bullet. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to copy and create a node instance. Um, and I'll just demonstrate that really quick. So we'll take this text two node, we'll hit control C, and as opposed to hitting control V, we're gonna hit control shift and V. And this creates a node instance so that the text two right here and the text two instance are identical. So if we edit either one, they both have the same thing in them. So let's connect up the text instance to the time speed here and the merge, and we'll bring that down. So we have the instance and the main text, and they're identical. So if we did something like change the font, it's gonna change in both of them, just like that. So we're gonna use that so that we have kind of one styling on the bullets and they'll be reused. So in our case, we're gonna to wanna to copy these nodes right here, the two text nodes, we're going to reuse the circle here, but we don't need to include that in our instances. So it's like the two transforms and the text nodes, and we're going to hit control C, and then we're going to hit control shift V. And that recreated all those nodes, and those green lines mean that they're instances of the other node. So let's create one more, control shift V. So this is going to really get us three bullets. And we're going to take we're going to take the this right here is just the bullet itself. And we're going to drag drag that into each of the nodes down here for the bullets. We'll hit this merge here so we can kind of see what we got. They're all on top of each other. So to fix this, what we need to do is we need to connect up the second bullet instance, which is in this row right here, to the time speed. And we're going to need to put another time speed in there. Let me go ahead and do that. We'll copy that. I'm going to time speed here. And, right here. and then we're going to take this time speed and bring it into that merge. And then finally, we'll go to the media out. So we have three bullets that are on top of each other. To see them, we can use this merge right here. And we can just kind of drag this one down. And we'll select the media out so we can see it. And we have this one right here. And we can drag that one down. So that's the basic, the basic bullet setup. Now the problem comes in with the text. If we wanted to, we, obviously we want to change the text of each bullet. So we'll go to this instance text two here, and you notice that anything we change, it changes for both of them. If you've copied a node instance, you can deinstance specific node properties so that everything is the same except for what you want to change. So we're going to right click on the text, and we're going to say deinstance, and that's going to allow us to change the text only on this one. We'll do that on the third bullet down here. We'll go to the text for the third, the third bullet. We're going to right click on styled text here and select D instance. And we got, we can put three, three, three there and we'll go up to the top one. And so we have our three bullets. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the numbers in here real quick. Okay. So at this point we have all of these nodes connected and everything can be controlled with what's on top here. So, if we wanted to change the style of this text, if we want to change the color, we select the, the one on top and we can choose a different color. Maybe we can make it uh, orange. And we have our orange bullets there. That's because all the other ones are instances, so they're gonna carry over all of the same properties that, not, that have not been de-instanced. So let's go ahead and reset that back to white. And like I said, we can adjust the size. There's, there's all kinds of things we can do. So let's take a look at the animation right, right now. So I'll, they come in and the text writes on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the custom tool and this is going to allow us to edit all of the bullet items in one place. Hit control and space and search for custom. 
right here and that's our custom tool so it has a lot of different fields and we're going to use this to change the properties of our text nodes so we'll hit this second part the uh, the second option right here for setup and these are just fields and we can use them however we want so we're going to do um let's type in well, one yep okay so this is some text here so how do we get this text to replace what's in here well there's a quite a few different ways to do it the easiest one is to right click on the text and set choose expression and we're going to connect this style text to the custom tool so with custom tool selected hit f2 on it and we're going to call that settings to make it a little easier to remember go back to the text node and where we said the expression we're going to say settings dot setup one because in here this field is called setup one and you notice that once we did that the text changed to bullet one. Let's do that for the next one. We're going to right click on style text, choose expression, and we're going to go settings, which references this, this node right here. And the property on that node is going to be setup two. We have that bullet text changed and we'll do that one more time. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a, a different way to do that. So if we go to the settings right here, we can right click on the setup three property and we can choose publish. So that's going to make this property available when you're connecting with other nodes. Let's go back down to the third instance. This is bullet text three. So instead of using an expression to do it, we're going to say connect to and settings showed up and then set up three. And that effectively did the same thing. So now we have bullet one, two, three. When we go to our custom node here, we can in one place, we can edit all the text for the bullets. Um, and this, it's going to be really nice to do it. If I wanted to turn this into a macro or something like that, it'd be really easy to do, um, having everything in one place. And I can add more bullets in and connect up the different fields. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to position this thing. Actually, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go ahead and add some more bullets um, so we can kind of see, have a little more to play with. We have everything set up now. I went through and did the de-instancing on each of the bullet items. The next thing we got to worry about is the positioning, but I uh, just want to show you how all of this is connected. If we change our bullet color, it's going to change everywhere. We can change the uh, the text styling. If we make it italic, it's going to be that way. And we'll just back that up. Okay, so what we're going to do with the spacing is I'm going to go to these merges and reset them to put everything back at the same position. Okay. So the positions of all of the uh, of all the bullets have been reset, they're right in the middle. Um, so we need to figure out how to move them around. So when you click the transform and we move the Y, you'll see that they're all moving because they're all right on top of each other and they're, uh, they're all right on top of each other with the same instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to de-instance the Y property on each of them. And as opposed to manually setting the, the position, we're going to actually use a formula in conjunction with the settings here. We're going to use this number in one. And when we adjust this, it's going to space it. It's going to adjust the spacing of our bullets. So to set this up, we're going to go to the very first transform for the first bullet. And for the center position, we're going to right click on that and say expression. And we know that 0.9 or one is the top and zero is the bottom. So we're going to start it out. It's the, this is the X position right here, followed by the Y position. So we're going to set the Y position to 0.9 and that's going to move it up to the top. So what we need to do is subtract off for each one of these. We need to, each instance, we need to subtract a little bit more. So this is going to be the base formula. We're going to go 0.9 minus, and we put in parentheses, and this is where we're going to use this property here, this number in one. So we can, we'll be able to use this slider to adjust the position. So we'll go back to the transform and in here, we're going to go settings dot number in one. And we're going to multiply that times zero for this one. In every instance, we're going to change this formula just slightly. So now what we, we see is when we have this, it's not going to move at all because that's times number in one times zero. So let's go to the next instance right here. 
So this formula is copied from the first transform, so we need to deinstance it so that we can set a specific formula for this, or some specific expression for this property here. So we're going to right click on that and say deinstance, and we're going to go number in one times one. And there's our second bullet right there. So now when we go to our settings with the control, you can see that we can adjust the bullet positions. And this becomes important as we change the size of the bullets and spacing. Let's do one more. This one right here, we're going to right click. This is the third bullet, right click, say D instance, and this is going to be times two. And there we go, we got the bullet. So I'm going to go through and do the rest of these real quick. Okay, so there's our uh, seven bullet list, and we can adjust the size here and shrink it together if our bullets are smaller. Um, we can also use this transform to change things about it. So if we wanted to adjust the angle of the bullets, we can do that, and they'll all go to the, follow that. Yeah, so we use the second transform, we can adjust the size of the bullets. So if we need to make them a little bit smaller, we can do that. And we can move them around with this transform right here. So let's play our animation. You notice all the bullets come at the same time, come in at the same time, so that's what we're going to use this time speed for. Now I'm just going to go through and change the delay on each of these. So we're going to change the delay, we'll go up by uh, 5 each time. So this first delay is 5, and what that did is that means the second bullet is going to come in, start animating 5 frames after the first one. Like that. I'm going to go do that for each of them. So we're going to set this one to 10, and then 15, 20, Okay, now let's play the animation. They come in like that. And the best part about this is everything's customizable. If we wanted to change the bullet, we could change the, uh, the color, we could the positioning like that. So go back. let's do a uh, blue bullet there. Um, and same thing with the text. We could come in and um, if we wanted to make the text a little bit bigger, we can do that a little bit smaller. It's all customizable, and if we want to change our, our bullet list, we'll just come in here, go to the second settings page, and we can type in really whatever we want, is, so we don't have to mess with the uh, structure down here. If we, we can actually we can actually take a lot of this um, that we don't need, like that, and we can create a group out of it just to kind of clean things up a bit. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole, this whole, all of this right here and save it off so that I can reuse it. Let me make it a little bit smaller here. So anyway, here's my reusable bullet list. Um, should be pretty easy to do. To reuse this, I'm just going to highlight all this stuff. So I'll right click on this and you just do settings, save as, and you can save it wherever you want to and load it in when you need it. Um, if you put it in the uh, fusion area, it'll actually show up in the templates so that you can just click it and drag it in and use it. Here's a quick sample of what we built. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to be using this in a lot of my upcoming videos. I'll be able to drop in the Fusion animation, edit the text, and in just a couple clicks and a couple keystrokes I'll have a nice bullet list. Okay, the Fusion composition is a little bit complicated. It didn't take too long to set up, but I've included a link down below if you want to be able to load it up yourself to kind of get a jump start on setting up a bullet list. Let me know if you use it in one of your projects. If you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. Comment below, and if you have any questions or anything, let me know. I'd be glad to hear from you. Thanks for watching.